Hi, this is John with Performance Plus Tennis. In today's lesson, I'm gonna give you three tips that are gonna help increase your power and your accuracy on your serve. And if you stick around until the end, we have a free gift for you that's gonna not only help you with your serve, but with every shot in the game. So the, the key to increasing your power on your serve is getting a motion that is fluid. So the tips I'm gonna give you today are gonna to help you develop a fluid, natural swing that's gonna easily generate a lot more power without a lot of extra effort. The first tip I want you to work on is leading with the left hand. Traditional instruction has always said something like arms go down together, up together. But when you do that, the racket is actually gonna to have to lag or wait unless you toss the ball very low. And I'm not an advocate of a low toss for most players in most situations. So what I would rather have you do is enter into the serve, like you see so many players today, both on the WTA and ATP tours, is they go enter into the serve and they lead with the left first and then let the right hand lag behind. For me, the right hand being a right-handed player. And they get the ball up in the air first and let the, let the racket lag behind. And what that naturally produces is a swing that is a one continuous swing that is fluid and natural. So in virtually every case today, you see that the high performance players, after they exit out of their routine and start, they'll come back and they'll lead in with the left and they'll lag with the right. And that's gonna help you set up to get a lot more fluidity in your motion. And as you're, you're gonna find out in the next step, it's gonna help you generate a lot more power as well. The second tip to increase your power is to get your ball toss up above the contact point. And this is a bit of a controversial topic. There's certainly coaches out there that advocate playing, placing the ball to the top of your contact point and then playing the ball when it stalls. But if you look at the majority of players on the ATP tour and WTA tour, the majority of cases, the ball is dropping 18 to 24 inches before it reaches the contact point. And I'm really a strong advocate of that. And that really goes hand in hand with leading with the left hand itself. Because if I lead with the left and I get the ball up nice and high, it gives me an opportunity to really engage my full body and get into a strong trophy position that will help me generate more power. If you shorten that cycle, you're much more likely to not get as much of your body involved and get a well-coordinated movement into the serve. So when you get out and practice your ball toss, work on getting that ball a good 18 to 24 inches above your contact point. One of the things you can do to help with that is get to the fence. So I have a, a fence drill that we're gonna go into next. It's gonna help you measure up your ball toss and help your height of your ball. The next drill I want you to practice is go to the fence and try to simulate how the racket is going to approach the ball on edge. So what you're gonna do is come up, have your continental grip of course, get your elbow back, come up and bang into the fence with the edge a couple of times and then come up and then hold it to the last instant and then turn it. And you'll see how that racket will start to accelerate into the fence. And that's the movement you wanna get. So really hold that edge as long as you can, three or four tries, and then turn at the last instant. And you'll discover how that acceleration happens and how the racket squares up on the ball. The third tip that's really gonna help increase your power is really understanding tension and how to eliminate tension. So we need to be relaxed and loose, but of course we also need to have a controlled motion. So how do we find that balance? Well. What I want you to do is when you're in your routine and you're starting your serve, I want you to have the racket and the ball in your non-dominant hand so that you can establish the tension right away with your playing hand. So if your left hand for me is in control of the racket, then I can control the amount of tension I put on the right hand. And then when I go into my routine, I maintain that level of tension so that I can feel the weight of the racket head. So this tension is really being developed or lack thereof is, is being developed right here in my routine as I can feel the weight of the racket head. And then when I come back to set my hands again, I resume control with the left hand and let that right hand just stay in the same degree of comfort on the handle. So nothing is increasing tension or decreasing. So then when I enter into my serve, I enter in with the same amount of tension or lack thereof as I had in my routine. And at this point, I can still feel the weight of my racket head so that and then I just maintain that all the way through the motion. So I wanna hold the racket firm enough so obviously I control it, but soft enough so that I can be fluid in my motion. And the best way 
to develop that skill is by doing the routine and having your non-dominant hand in control. If you're one of the types of players that has your hands apart and you're holding on and you do this kind of a thing, you're gonna be tightening up in here and as you play more and you get more tight and more tired, you're gonna be holding on tighter and then everything becomes tension. So the best way to eliminate tension is to involve the dominant hand in the beginning of the surf. So the next thing that I want you to work on in your motion is, and it's gonna be the byproduct of these things, is you're gonna get a much greater range of motion in your serve. And what I mean specifically by that is that if you look at the range of motion that the racket undertakes, it's much greater than what the arm is doing at the same time. So look where the racket is. It's all the way down the back, it's all the way up and over, and it's all the way turned. So the racket is literally moving, not, not a full 360 degrees creating a full circle, but it's certainly over 300 degrees from the bottom to here. But the arm is only moving a much lesser degree. So when you're out practicing, what you wanna do is not try to force the forearm forward, but rather throw upward and let the arm almost feel like it stalls and let the racket come up over the arm and then down, point to the bottom and then come through. And that's gonna be much easier to achieve if you do these previous three things. Lead with the left hand, get the ball tossed up so you can get a nice balance and a nice load and then have a nice relaxed swing that's one motion and fluid and you can really throw that racket up over the top and get a lot more racket head speed with less effort. I hope you really enjoyed and benefited from this lesson today. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel here if you've not done so already. Give us a like and turn on your notifications because we have new content releasing weekly. And don't forget to click in the link below to gain access to our library of lessons that reveals all the fundamental skills you need to learn, not only your serve, but on every shot in the game. And in addition to our free library of lessons on our website, you'll also see that we have a world-renowned Surf Foundation course that teaches all the foundational principles that have helped hundreds of players like you develop a professional quality serve. So take a look around, and thank you again for watching today's video, and we'll see you soon.